Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in uh, today's video, I want to show you um, a new brush that I created for Procreate and show you why I think it's pretty good for line work. Obviously, the uh, 4.2 update and the stroke, ta uh, stroke taper features they added are fantastic, but you still got to get your settings right. So I'm going to share uh, a few brushes with you, one of which is a short spike brush. And uh, I find this one to be really nice for line work. This is actually a pose that I was uh, working on that I, I looked at some poses on Pinterest and then I did my own version, you know, kind of edited a little bit. But um, but basically, I'll make sure that there's a link to the Pinterest board where I save a lot of my reference uh, like that when I'm studying and playing around. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't see the artist's name, so I couldn't reference them. So if you see the work and know the artist, make sure to comment below because I always like to give credit where credit's due. It's a really great pose and I had fun uh, redrawing it. So at any rate, this uh, particular brush is kind of like, you know, calligraphy tip or something. You can get a straight line going across, kind of a thicker line uh, up to down or <laughs> up to down uh, vertically, I guess. Uh, but basically when you utilize this brush, it's really nice for these stylized kind of lines. So, you know, I'll just kind of illustrate this a little bit in the way that I'm Kind of thinking so you can get a nice variation thick to thin you can kind of pick up where you left off pretty easily and you also want to adjust the the speed in which you create the line so sometimes you want to like let the brush cut, uh, catch up and other times you want a quick uh, quick sweeping pull but one of the things I like best about the new 4.2 update is I can pick up on my lines pretty well. Before I couldn't seem to do that, uh, meaning I can drop off a line and catch it um, with another line pretty effortlessly, pretty easily, uh, because, I don't know, it's just got more control than the previous version did. And so when you get these brushes just right, I think that You'll be able to really take advantage of what they did here and ink your work. You're still going to want to play with the size slider as you go. Some of these lines you're going to want to be thicker. And I guess I'll talk a little bit about line weight and what I'm trying to do here. So essentially, when I try to create my line weight, I try to have lots of variation. Uh, I generally will have one line uh, thicker to one side of the anatomy. So what you see me doing there is putting a thicker uh, line on the outer edge or where I would perceive there being maybe a shadow or something like that. But it's really just a, a difference of one side to the next and sometimes just a difference of a curve and a change in the line's uh, kind of trajectory. So there's lots of ways to really perceive line weight. But the main thing is, is that you want the, uh, the anatomy to feel like it's, you know, it's going in and out of space. It's not just residing in one particular plane. So with a brush like this, it's pretty easy to do like uh, these kind of comic style lines, you know, your little rendering as you go, stuff like that. It's got a lot of variation, so I can get, you know, some pretty hefty lines when I need to and some pretty thin lines. Uh, another thing that's kind of nice about this brush, let me get to an area where I can showcase this. Uh, maybe right here. Let me bump it down a little bit. So you can also do these nice little uh, spikes. That's actually what I designed it for. Just just these tiny little spikes that I like to throw in as I render the line work. But then you can also do that little side line because again, it's working like uh, you know it's basically a flat edge. I'll show you the brush tip. It's nothing too. Uh, groundbreaking but it works really well so it's just a little rectangle turned to the side and then I have the settings set to orient uh, to screen somewhere in here right there under brush behavior and I'll show you the stroke taper pressure taper keep in mind too the only difference here from the stroke taper where it says pressure taper and touch taper is if you're working with your hand you're going to you're going to worry more about touch taper settings and pressure taper is based on the Apple Pencil, so or stylus, I think, but just keep that in mind. You can copy down the settings there. Um, I'm often changing the settings on the fly because, you know, I just feel like not uh, not one particular brush is gonna 
facilitate every action that I'm trying to do. But I'll tell you, this one's probably the most versatile that I've found. I don't think that looks right for the ribs. Do something like this. And you see I'm taking a little bit more of a stylized approach as I'm doing this. Just kind of playing around with it and trying some new things. Mix it up a bit. But yeah, I really like this brush. It has a very, very cool vibe and flow to it. Uh, let's see, what else can I illustrate? I'll do the stomach muscles here because I can do some uh, little shading on there and show you how uh, I like to shade with this brush. So notice I'm, I'm messing around with the speed in which I maneuver this brush and kind of flicking uh, the end of it sometimes. So I'm trying to randomize the, the behavior of it a little bit so it looks more interesting. And when, when I need to, I can really uh, bear down on it and get a, a lot thicker uh, line as needed. Okay, so well, let's do the side of the abdomen. So something like that. And then, uh, let's get one over here too. Okay, so let's add a layer and let's go ahead and practice some shading. So right here, just to illustrate what I'm going to do, I want to put a shadow coming down this way with a bunch of lines running in this direction. I'm going to kind of converge them like this. So that's kind of my thought process. Uh, but what's also nice about a brush like this, I'm going to have to practice just to get the start of it going. And I also have to I draw kind of funky. I tilt my hand, so that's why you see the the uh, screen kind of tilted there. And I also want these to kind of converge together at the top. Not quite getting it, but I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, you know, let me just bump up the brush size. Maybe that'll fix the. Uh, you know, I, a lot of times you want the lines to converge together like that. Not always, but a lot of times it kind of gives a a neater effect. I mean, I guess you want variations of that. So you want some that do this and some that don't, but I'm kind of picturing for this area that it's a pretty dense shadow or gradient, and this is a good way to get it. There we go. It's weird, it always takes me a second to warm up what I'm after and then after that that's why it's probably a good idea once you get warmed up to a certain thing is go through the work and do all of that one thing so you're not fighting your own uh, you know mechanics or behavior I guess see and you can see from back here it's a pretty neat shaded effect um, without too much headache there and another thing you can do, I found that works pretty well with this brush, is you can you can even go back and hit those little in between areas. So like right here, it's pretty noticeable. And this is what I mean about the brushes being better, where you can pick up where you left off with some good accuracy. Because this particular stylus and setup doesn't have a floating cursor. You know, you get real used to that in digital art, which is kind of silly because you don't have that in. Uh, traditional art, but I've noticed a lot of artists complain about it, like, where's the cursor, you know? But the good thing is, is this thing's so accurate, is you can really get in here and, and pick up where you left off and usually hit your mark pretty close. So get these filled in as much as you want. Another neat little effect is, you know, race back. That's the beauty of putting on another layer too. So you can erase back some of these lines and make it look a bit more 
inventive, I guess. Okay, so let me render a few more little areas of this. But yeah, so try this brush out. So what I'm going to do is make it available on my Gumroad. And don't worry, this is a free, or I should say it's a pay what you want, but it's free. So if you don't, you know, if you got money to pay, don't worry about it. Just grab the brush. It's actually going to come with a bunch of brushes. Uh, I made this free brush pack for Procreate. And, you know, maybe at some point I might switch it to paid, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to give back a little bit because... You know, you guys support the channel and everything. It's not a big deal. So just share the video or something like that if you want to give back. But uh, but the main thing is try the brushes out. See what you think. Play around with them. Make some adjustments to the settings. But always save a copy. That way, if you adjust it and you get adverse effects, you can always go back to that original one. And let me show you that real quick. Just so you know what I'm talking about. So you can just go in here. Swipe over. Hit duplicate. You know, I'm not going to do that because I want to keep this the way it is. But then you can tap it and you tap right there and rename it. So just make sure to make a copy and then you're always you're always good. And i just seen uh, a few people, you know, complaining that they couldn't get the new stroke taper feature to work. And I'm over here thinking, wow, I'm digging it. You know, I'm like creating art with it and having fun with it. So I figured I would share the brush setting and see what you guys think there. So... You know, again, try mixing this up, using it in different ways, just like you would ink your work. You know, try to be creative with the way you put it down. After you get a, a layer the way you want, you can just merge it down by pinching it. I'll add one more layer, and I'll add a shadow through here. So again, same thing. I'll do these bigger kind of uh, you know tapered lines, and that's really what this the strength of this brush is. Just a bunch of tapered lines. Uh, the cross hatching comes out really nice. Now I'll take it and erase back right here. And again, a couple of negative lines. Why not? And you can come off the edge of lines like this or areas like this. And again, put those nice little spikes that are real popular. You know what's funny is, is the reason I made this one. Actually, let me have these get bigger. And I'll show you why I actually made this brush and why it came out this way. Something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so so yeah, so this is what happened. I wanted to um I've always been into like this one style of shading like this. I used to do this a lot more in my uh traditional art. And, you know, you do this kind of thing where you get these little bumps like this. It's real popular. You see a lot of comic artists do it, especially the, the whole 90s era, you know. So I could never seem to get these nice, clean little spikes without making a brush that was a repetitive pattern. So that's really all, all I was trying to do is make this one little effect right there. And, uh, and I felt like, oh, that pretty much worked. And then I started inking the rest of the piece with it. Uh, mainly the outlines. That's probably the part I like the most about this brush is because these outlines come out really energetic, I think. So you can be the judge of it. Let me know what you think and you know in the comments section below and say, you know, what you like about this brush if you use it or what you think could be better or what are you looking for in the way of uh, custom brushes, you know, for your ink work. So just kind of share that information. And uh, if I can come up with some better ones, I will. I'll add them to the brush pack and keep on trucking so but yeah I'm really digging this one I think that uh I'll probably be using this a lot in my work and yeah so what else uh I think it even has a nice little vibe for uh for rendering in a uh a sketch like way I'll try to show you that with the eyes here <clears throat> this was supposed to be carnage, but I don't know who it's going to be now. I might still do that, but just kind of dinking around. Like I said, I really like that pose that I saw, and it just kind of made me want to try something. Give them the really tired eyes. One higher up than the other. It's always, it's always fun. 
kind of naturally what I do in my art for some weird reason. Then I got to check it and go back and fix it. And then tons of wrinkles. Because wrinkles are scary. Maybe this could be like a what if. Like what if Spawn lost his cape? God, I miss the What If books. I'd like to know if they still do those. I used to read those all the time from Marvel. They were like probably one of my favorite series of books, actually. Like, what if Wolverine was a vampire or some, you know, there was always these crazy what ifs. So yeah, you can almost draw with this. Obviously, you can draw with any brush, but just play around with it. Try some different renderings, see what you can come up with. And let me know what you think. So yeah, I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below. I'm kind of just going off and doodling right now. But but again, I think you might like this. I would love to know what you think in the comments section below. I think I already said that. Forgive me. And uh, as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.